guys, it's ShishkaBobber1 coming right back at you with another Boom Beach video. So, oh, got the green screen fading out. So, okay, Mega Crab's over. Finally, finally over. I got some sleep. I'm still feeling groggy, to be honest. Uh, as you see, guys, we got the Diamond Anniversary statue, so super pumped about that. Not only that, but uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard um, for the Canada. Crazy Turtle at 108 on the stage. Congratulations to you, sir. That is incredible. Uh, did you make the global rankings? Do we see the global rankings? How do we know? But you did a fantastic job. Congratulations. Um, I ended up, I believe, in 14th place. I think I think the event's over for all time zones now. I got to stage 77 uh, with 27.9% complete. Zedmont came out of nowhere at the end yesterday and really started climbing up the ladders. Um, and he finished at 17th uh, on stage 75. <clears throat> and... Uh, Below him, guys, is the chicken in 21st place. So I have a feeling Zedmont was aiming for the chicken. Maybe he saw me on there and was like, oh, we can maybe take down Shishkebobber, but I think he just didn't spend all nearly the time on it that I did, so he just uh, ran out of time, ran out of turns, whatever. I'm sure he could have been up there with uh, Crazy Turtle. It, it, it's too bad he wasn't able to, uh, to compete this weekend full-time. Uh, but yeah, whatever else, just a bunch of other people I'm not, don't really know that many... I don't know anyone else on here. Um, so there we go. That's the ending to the Mega Crab. What this video is about, guys, oh my gosh. When I saw the previews for the sneak peeks or whatever for this update, and I saw the Grenadier Speed Tribe over here, I couldn't wait for it. And it's here, and oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, okay, they messed up. The game is broken, but <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it. Let, let, let me show you what I'm doing, okay? Uh, there, there's there's two primary combos I'm running. Both of them involve Kavan and the second wind. It goes very well with our extra gunboat ability, the um, <laughs> the remote defibrillator. Let, let, let's compare these two for a moment, though, okay? Remote defibrillator, the value on it is not that high, so be careful not to spam it too much, guys. You only get six housing space for it, um, whereas with my uh, second wind, and it's not fully upgraded, my second wind gives me 12, okay? So right now I've got a two to one ratio, so I always keep that in mind, like, uh, basically, I will use second wind as long as the, um, what's it called? I'll use second wind as long as remote defib is uh, more than half the cost of a second wind. Otherwise, I'll use remote defib, because they have a two to one output, right? One gives me 12, the other gives me six. So. I just do it that way when I go back and forth, but the whole idea here is we're using this to basically put Johnson's on the front line for our Grens. I'm rolling 6-2 Gren Med with Kavan and Second Wind, or 7-1 Gren Med. It depends on um, how much damage boost there is. Basically the rocket, the incoming rocket damage and how quickly the healers can heal that up. 6-2 uh, is much safer, 7-1 is a heck of a lot of fun. 8-0, I haven't even tried, but uh, it's probably pure chaos. Um, yeah. So I play this like I play the Rainmakers, and it is so much fun. I, I've boosted my GBE right now. I boosted that because just before I took down a, uh, what was he? He was like a 114-102 or something like that. I probably could have gotten him without uh, boosting, but if you look at my gold, it's running really, really low, and we still have Hammerman attacks to do today. I've done a few of the stages, but um, I need my gold. So I boosted it up just to make sure we got, uh, took him down. Let's, let's show you that takedown, actually. Um, let's show you what I'm talking about. Was it this guy? It's wherever I have the boost on the GBE. Okay, it was this guy. Yeah, so he was like a one, he was an A-level base. He, he was a 114, 102 or something like that. So let's get into it, guys. Let's, see, let's just see what we do here. First of all, take a moment to observe the base. All of his ice is hiding in the trees, but it's all boosted in the back there. Uh, we're gonna come in at the bottom right corner. We're gonna do some work on the Shock Blaster 3. And uh, yeah, let's just see what happens, guys. We, we actually, we put the healers out first. The reason why is the Grens are so darn fast, like, if they start running around and doing stuff, like, the, the healers have a hard time keeping up. Um, so we're gonna, okay, we're gonna start working on the Shock Blaster 3. Um, oh yeah, and we work on the rocket, because the rocket damage, it can hurt. One of the few things that can actually hit the Grens. And they also splash the Johnsons, so the Johnsons don't live that long. So, okay, it looks like we were pretty low on GBE at this point. I think we just leave the Shock Blaster, and we're going to wait for the overthrow damage of the Grin to take it out. And like, like I said, the healers come out first. Um, I get one uh, second win going out, and now we're just going to work our way out of this corner. Okay, we put some shocks down on the rocket, on the, I'm sorry, on the two cannons and the boom cannon. Now we're going to use some critters to pop, 
pop the hot pot, and then we're going to shock it when it pops, guys. You know how we do it. Uh, we're getting another, uh, this time it's the remote defib, and uh, we're just waiting for the uh, overthrow from a grin to take care of that shock blaster. Hot pot is down, shock blaster 3 is down. Remember guys, with this tribal shock blaster 3 damage is boosted by 50%. Okay, there's a shock on the uh, shock blaster, shock launcher, and the uh, boom cannon to the 4 o'clock of the HQ. The shock launcher did not last long. Okay, we're fanning out a little bit. And we're getting hit up by the, uh, getting lit up by the uh, boom cannon to the nine o'clock of the HQ, trying to kind of save it, smoking it, covering it. You know what? Forget it. We're just going to turn the corner, guys. So we flare down to the corner. Look at how fast the grins move. It is beautiful. It is like poetry in motion. Watching the intoxicated destruction that's accelerated by a hundred percent that these grenadiers are now doing. So we're getting all that overthrow damage, uh, killing all the stuff behind the HQ, well behind your little door vantage point. Look, we had the mortar targeting our grins. Run away! <laughs> just send a flare and they just they GTFO like nobody. It is amazing. Now the healers actually can keep up pretty well with the grins because as long as one of them is damaged, they will uh, run after them as fast as they can. And healers have a very fast run speed, so in general, they're not too bad at keeping up with them. Um, so we're working our way around. The uh, shock launcher is still up, uh, but we've got one grin slowly picking away at it. We've got the rest of them coming over here working on the uh, shield gen three. We lose a couple of our uh, resurrected Johnsons to the machine gun, but that's all right. Um, I think, yeah, we do, we use an artillery to finish off the shock launcher, the, um, shield generator 3 is almost down, and, uh, I think as soon as that happens, we're gonna be flaring back to the HQ, and we'll get a close flare to it so we can increase our accuracy and increase our destructive power. So, um, no, that really wasn't the flare I was expecting. Did we just kill it from there? Well, either way, it'll work, but, uh, what was I afraid of? Oh, maybe I was afraid of the mortar, that's what I was afraid of. So we just kill it from there. Yeah, I was afraid of the mortar on that side, and I guess I was afraid of the boom cannon on this side. Yeah, I guess for these reasons I didn't want to get too close. Um, anyway, just like that, kaboom, uh, an A-level base goes down to pound town, guys. This combo is incredible. Well, there's lots of other combos you can run, okay? I mean, obviously, I saw the chicken just now doing it with a bullet knee drink. That, that's pretty fun. I've run bullets best with it. Um, I find that the Grens are so fast, the tank is practically worthless. <laughs> the tank won't even stay in front when you need him to be in front. And I find that the uh, Universe, not Universe Remote, the second wind with the Remote Defib is a very, very good synergy with these troops. Um, I've got one guy on my map right now, he just spawned a little bit ago. Um, he's a zero level. Uh, let's take a look at him. We're going to take him out, show you how it's done. Okay. Now he's got two of the uh, CMOs, but I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, we'll just do a corner takedown. We'll we'll drop in the bottom right corner, and uh, we'll actually just bart out these two boom cannons. And uh, yeah, I think I think that'll do it. Pretty much all we need to do. Watch this, guys. Barting at the boom cannons completely optional. I'm just trying to save gold. Um, okay. If anything, the higher tri hi higher priority target to bart would be the shock launcher. I might I might still uh, bart out the close shock launcher. Okay, and the 50% uh, increased damage to artillery is awesome. Do not forget about that, guys. It's it's quite amazing. In fact, because of that, we'll use that artillery damage on this shock launcher in the back. One artillery and two, and sayonara. Okay, like I said, healers first. Actually, let's go critters. Healer, healer, just spam everybody else. Let's get Johnson's coming. Let's get two waves of Johnson's with a UR of Johnson's. We'll go ahead and shock the mortar, boom cannon, and cannon. Not that I think it's necessary at all, but we'll just do it purely to save gold. Let's get some critters on the left flank. Some heals for the Johnsons in front of that flamethrower. Oh, let's get another second wind going. See right now the cost of second wind is 38 and the cost of remote defib is 18. Therefore, second wind is still the best value, assuming I can afford that much GBE. Okay, let's put a shock on the boom cannon, flamethrower, and rocket launcher to the 9 o'clock of the HQ. Let's do one more second wind. Uh, let's put a heal down for our Johnsons that are coming out in front. And uh, yeah, guys, it's pure, pure destruction. We'll do a remote defib just because we can. And we'll throw down a heal again because we can. Kaboom! Just like that, looks like we lost one grin. Uh, Chinese character player goes down to Pound Town with these amazing tribal grins, guys. I cannot tell you enough how good these are. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll share one more replay with the Strata. This is one of the ones I shared with my uh, task force. 
this was, I think, a zero level base. This is when I was just figuring it out last night before I went to sleep. Um, it's going to pretty much be the same strat. No, he's not zero level. I'm sorry. He's a 64-66. Yeah, okay, 64-66. And I believe I was unboosted. We can check that. But this this should be this should have been unboosted. Look at these two shocks in the front. Critters on the shocks, perfect tanks. Watch these Grens coming in. Just the destruction is absolutely incredible with these guys. You've got to run these. You've got to try it out. I'm sure there's some other really good combos to work with this. Um, I'm sure Bullet Knee Drink works quite well. Maybe just forget about the Grens. My only problem with that was when I was running it with the healers, um, the destruction is so massive. Bullet runs all over the place like a ping pong ball. The healers uh, were really getting picked off a lot. This is why I found that Kavan was a better choice, because more or less he stays back. He will go up and heal those Johnsons, and sometimes if all the Johnsons die, Kavan's in the front line, and then he gets capped. So you got to watch out for that. But uh, it, generally speaking, he I think he's the better choice with this. In my opinion, I'm just still testing it out, but uh, it's a lot of fun, guys. Look at this. You know, it's just the boom cannons you got to keep an eye on, basically. Uh, here, we were just kind of letting things fan out, and uh, I think the sniper tower might have been doing a little bit of work to us. Doesn't matter, guys. Yeah, this guy had a shield, too, but at this point, I think we're just worrying about... Uh-oh, we're going to lose that one on the left. Yeah, we're just worrying about taking out those boom cannons behind the HQ. I think we're still trying to get a gauge for just how much damage you guys are capable of, so I don't bother flaring around or doing anything. I think we probably flare closer, I hope. I hope we flare closer. Anyway, we got it in double times right now. Let's go to triple or quadruple times. No, we're just sitting there burning. Yeah, again, I was still feeling stuff out. Um, oh, and again, maybe I was afraid of that mortar and sniper tower. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, guys, kaboom, just like that, that player went down. And I believe that was unboosted. Um, I think most of these attacks you can actually perform unboosted. I just got to get a little bit better at it. The um, Yeah, that was unboosted. Yeah, there was another one. This was a resource base. I had my map was clear, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I got to test these things." Um, and these were some of my preliminary tests. It's probably one of the easier resource bases on my map. There's a lot that I can't even drop grinds on, or they'll, they'll just melt. Uh, but yeah, check out what happens here. Okay, so we're shocking the mortars, shocking the rocket launchers. Same thing using the uh, second wind and a uh, remote defib to bring some uh, Johnsons up to the front line. It's also great, guys, having the uh, second wind ability because if things do go bad, especially if like your healers start getting picked off and there's a lot of damage, uh, you can bring back the healers, which is great. So you gotta, you gotta realize it's like critters, but better, like definitely better. Um, because of that, even with the remote defib, like if you're losing grands or you're losing healers, be careful where you put your remote defibrillator. Like, you might think that you're going to get Johnson's out of it, but maybe it's going to spawn that, um, you know, the healer or Gren that you forgot about that died. And if you use the remote defib and put it in the front line, you just spawned a Gren or a healer where they don't need to be. So as a general rule, I kind of do all the spawns like where my, at the level of where my Grenadiers are. Wherever my Grenadiers are, it's where I'll throw the remote defib. Unless I know for sure no, nobody's dead and it's only going to spawn Johnson's, then I'll throw it up front. Okay, keep that in mind as well. L little tip. But I think that's going to wrap it up, make this one short and sweet. Uh, I might do a Hammerman Attacks video later on today. But uh, as always, guys, I uh, hope you have a super fantastic, awesome day. And remember, be kind to others. Because if you're not, you're just being mean and mean people suck. Have a great day.